Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look and see what it does to the phase angle by putting in various values for X sub C, the capacitor reactance, we're going to get a different impedance, and of course what we wanted was the largest impedance possible, but let's also take a look at the phase angle changes when we put in different capacitor reactants, just like we did before. Here we still have the old values from the first couple of parts of the problem, the initial impedance, the resistance, the initial current, and the uh, inductive reactants. So remember that we started out with a lagging phase angle of 36.87 degrees. That's essentially a negative phase angle. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the ways in which we can calculate the new phase angle. And remember that the final impedance is going to be the initial impedance times the capacitive reactance divided by the square root of the sum of the squares of the, of the resistance and the difference in the reactances. And if we put it in this format, notice we get the three phase angles. We can then see that the phase angle for the final impedance, when we add the capacitor, a capacitor in parallel to the initial inductive circuit, we then get the initial phase angle minus 90 minus the tangent of the difference in the reactances divided by the resistance. If we then plug in the var various values for the capacitor reactance, we get new phase angles. Notice we get a minus 46.39 degree phase angle here when we put in a capacitor that gives us two ohms of capacitor reactance. We remember from the previous video that we end up with an impedance that was smaller than the impedance we had initially, and therefore it was not the right value to use because a smaller impedance would require even more current. That means we had a smaller power factor. We want the power factor to be as big as possible. So the next thing we did was put in four ohms for bigger uh, impedance, and notice now we have a phase angle of only about minus 8.5 degrees, which is much better of what we had before. That means we're much closer to a power factor of one. Then if we increase it to six ohms, then we had a positive 8.53 degree phase angle. Notice that both of these phase angles, positive or negative, the same amount, will give us the same impedance. The impedance doesn't care if it's a lagging or leading phase angle. And we can see then that the correct value, the max, the best value we can get is somewhere in between. Notice that if we use a capacitor reactance of 5 ohms, we get a phase angle of very close to 0 degrees, with other, with other words, a power factor very close to equal to 1. Then if we continue to increase the capacitor reactance, then you can see that now the phase angle begins to grow again. At 20 ohms of capacitor reactance, we're almost back to where we started, so it's definitely not where we want to go. So again, you can see how by changing the capacitor reactance, you're going to get different phase angles, and the idea is to get the phase angle as close as possible to zero, like in the case that you have a 5 ohm capacitor reactance, and therefore a power factor close to 1. And that's what we call correcting the power factor. We want to get as close to 1 as possible. In such a way, we require the least amount of current to the load to provide the power to the resistive portion of the load. And so hopefully these last few videos, including this one, gives you a really good idea of what the concept of a power factor is and how we change the power factor by, or correcting it by adding a capacitor in parallel in order to increase the impedance, therefore reduce the angle, the phase angle, therefore increasing the power factor. And that's what it's all about because by increasing the power factor, it will require less current to the load in order to provide the power required. And that is how it's done.